the eight dark facts that only exist in Japan. In the year 1603, Japan entered the Edo period, marked by stability and isolation. Yet beneath the veneer of tranquility, societal pressures brewed, shaping the nation's unique cultural landscape. However, today Japan grapples with modern complexities amidst its rich historical tapestry. From the specter of Kuroshi to the haunting allure of Aokigahara, the nation navigates a labyrinth of shadows and light. Explore the hidden truths of Japan's enigmatic depths as we delve into eight dark facts that only exist in Japan. Number one, suicide forests. Aokigahara Forest, located at the base of Mount Fuji in Japan, is known colloquially as the Suicide Forest. This dense woodland has gained notoriety as a site where individuals go to contemplate and carry out suicide. Despite efforts by authorities to prevent such tragedies, Aokigahara's reputation persists, drawing both those in despair and curious visitors. The history of Aokigahara is deeply intertwined with Japanese mythology and cultural perceptions. It has long been associated with spirits and ghosts in Japanese folklore, adding to its eerie reputation. In recent decades, however, it has become tragically linked with suicide. Authorities regularly patrol the forest, and signs offering support and encouragement to seek help are placed along its trails. Despite these efforts, the forest remains a somber symbol of mental health struggles in Japan. The allure of Aokigahara lies not only in its natural beauty, but also in its haunting atmosphere. The dense foliage and silence create an environment that can evoke feelings of isolation and despair, drawing individuals who may already be struggling with mental health issues. The juxtaposition of life and death within the forest boundary serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility of human existence. Number two, suicide is redemption. Seppuku, also known as Harakiri, was a traditional form of ritual suicide practiced by samurai in feudal Japan. Research shows that it was often used as a method for samurai to preserve their honor in the face of defeat or disgrace. Historical accounts detail the elaborate ceremonial aspects of seppuku, including the precise positioning of the samurai and the role of a kaishikunin, or assistant, who would behead the samurai to hasten death and prevent prolonged suffering. The practice of seppuku, while no longer legally sanctioned, continues to influence Japanese culture and society. Today, the concept of suicide as redemption persists in the form of intense societal pressure to take responsibility for one's actions, particularly among public officials or corporate executives embroiled in scandals. This pressure can lead to resignation or, in extreme cases, suicide. Recent examples include high-profile cases of public figures choosing to end their lives in response to allegations of wrongdoing. Number three, the workaholic culture. In Japan, the workaholic culture is deeply ingrained with the term kuroshi symbolizing death from overwork. Employees often work long hours, sometimes to the point of exhaustion and health problems. The pressure to prioritize work above all else can lead to burnout and even premature death. While this culture has historical roots in Japan's post-war economic development, it has increasingly come under scrutiny for its adverse effects on individuals' well-being. The workaholic culture in Japan stems from a complex interplay of historical, social, and economic factors. Following World War II, Japan experienced rapid industrialization and economic growth, leading to a societal emphasis on hard work and dedication. This cultural norm became further entrenched as companies expected employees to demonstrate loyalty and commitment by putting in long hours. However, this dedication to work often comes at the expense of personal time, health, and relationships. Many argue that the pressure to work excessively is unsustainable and detrimental to individuals' physical and mental health. The concept of Kuroshi highlights the extreme consequences of this culture with cases of overwork-related deaths reported each year. Furthermore, research suggests that long working hours can lead to decreased productivity and creativity, ultimately harming both individuals and companies in the long run. Number four, the price of perfection. In Japan, conformity is deeply ingrained in society, promoting a strong sense of community and national pride. However, this emphasis on conformity can also have negative consequences, particularly regarding individuality and social acceptance. Social pressure to conform to societal norms can be intense, leading to feelings of isolation and exclusion, especially among those who deviate from the expected norms of behavior and appearance. This pressure is particularly acute for young people who often face bullying and ostracization if they are perceived as different. Japan's cultural emphasis on conformity fosters a sense of unity and belonging, but it can also create a stifling environment for those who don't fit in. From a young age, Japanese individuals are taught to prioritize the needs of the group over their own desires, leading to a strong aversion to standing out or challenging the status quo. This pressure to conform extends beyond just behavior, it also encompasses appearance, speech, and even career choices. For many Japanese people, the desire to fit in and avoid standing out can be overwhelming. This pressure can lead to a sense of isolation and alienation for those who feel unable or unwilling to conform to societal expectations. 
In extreme cases, individuals may withdraw from social interactions altogether, retreating into isolation to avoid the judgment and scrutiny of others. Number five, unclaimed ashes. In the year 2000, Japan faced a demographic turning point as its population began to age rapidly. This phenomenon stemmed from factors such as longer life expectancy and declining birth rates, leading to a significant increase in the proportion of elderly individuals within the society. But among the consequences of this demographic shift was the rise of solitary deaths, particularly among the elderly population living alone. However, today in the bustling city of Tokyo, the challenges of Japan's aging population have become increasingly evident. As the number of solitary deaths continues to rise, a unique dilemma has emerged the fate of unclaimed ashes. These are the remains of individuals who pass away alone, often with no known relatives to claim or attend to their final arrangement. Set against the backdrop of Japan's rapidly aging society, the story of unclaimed ashes unfolds with a poignant reminder of the social isolation experienced by many elderly individuals. Temples and special facilities have been established to house these urns, each containing the remains of someone whose life story remains a mystery. In these solemn spaces, the unclaimed ashes serve as a testament to the challenges faced by an aging society grappling with social isolation and changing family structures. Number six, the lonesome doll industry. In the early 2000s, Japan found itself facing a demographic dilemma. With a declining birth rate and an aging population, societal structures were under strain. Among the consequences was a noticeable shift in family dynamics. Traditional family units, once a cornerstone of Japanese society, began to evolve. Fast forward to the present day, and the repercussions of this demographic shift are palpable. Families are smaller, and the pressure to conform to societal norms regarding marriage and child rearing has intensified. For many Japanese adults, particularly those who are single or unable to have children, navigating societal expectations can be daunting. However, today, amidst these challenges, a peculiar trend has emerged the rise of reborn dolls. These hyper-realistic dolls are not just toys, they are treated as surrogate children by some individuals. Meet Yuki, a 35-year-old office worker living in Tokyo. Unmarried and without children, Yuki found herself feeling increasingly isolated in a society that places great emphasis on family, unable to fulfill societal expectations of marriage and motherhood. She struggled with feelings of inadequacy and loneliness. One day, while browsing the internet, Yuki stumbled upon a community of individuals who found solace in caring for reborn dolls. Intrigued, she decided to purchase one for herself. As she held the lifelike doll in her arms, she felt a sense of comfort wash over her. For Yuki, the doll provided companionship and a sense of purpose in a society that often overlooked individuals like her. However, beneath the surface of this seemingly harmless trend lies a deeper societal issue the profound impact of Japan's demographic challenges on individual well-being. The rise of reborn dolls highlights not only the loneliness experienced by many Japanese adults, but also the innovative ways in which individuals seek to cope with societal pressures. Number 7. The Yakuza in the year 1612, during Japan's Edo period, a group known as the Yakuza emerged. Initially, they were considered chivalrous outlaws, often providing protection to the common people against oppressive authorities. With a strict code of conduct and hierarchical structure reminiscent of samurai clans, they gained notoriety but also a degree of respect within certain communities. While their influence has diminished compared to their peak in the mid-20th century, they still maintain a foothold in various industries, including gambling, extortion, and even legitimate businesses. Despite government crackdowns and efforts to eradicate their presence, the Yakuza persist, adapting to changing times and continuing to operate in the shadows. Some argue that the decline of the Yakuza has left a power vacuum in certain sectors, leading to increased competition and potentially more violent clashes between rival factions. Number 8. The Fukushima Explosion Zone. In the year 2011, Japan was struck by a devastating nuclear disaster following a massive earthquake and tsunami. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant suffered multiple meltdowns, leading to the release of radioactive materials into the surrounding environment. However, today, the aftermath of the Fukushima disaster still casts a long shadow over the region. Entire towns lay abandoned within the vast exclusion zone established around the nuclear plant. The once thriving communities now stand as eerie ghost towns, frozen in time, their streets deserted, and buildings left to decay. Amidst the desolation, there lies a deeper tale of human resilience and the complexities of rebuilding in the face of such a catastrophic event. As the reader delves deeper into the Fukushima exclusion zone, they will uncover not only the physical remnants of the disaster, but also the enduring spirit of the people who once called this area home.